Last spring was my aunt's funeral in Sonoma. It was the first time Thomas and our daughter Fauna had been there. The day after the service, we went to see the Vallejo family home. We looked at photos of the general who more than 100 years ago led California from being part of Mexico to being part of the United States. We looked at his 16 children, especially Luisa, my mom's great-grandmother, who gave Fauna her middle name. But instead of feeling connected to part of my roots, I kept thinking about all the people who aren't mentioned in the displays, who worked in the fields, cooked and cleaned, whose communities were shattered by disease and conflict, whose languages were mostly destroyed. If the past we inherit affects who we become, I wonder sometimes, what debt do I owe? for the things my ancestors did? And what of their love and courage do I get to claim? What fragments of my lineage over centuries and decades collided with my 1970s privileged suburban childhood and gave me the ability to say, when I was only four or five and the covers were being pulled away from my body in the darkest hours, no, don't touch me. For so, so many years afterwards, that voice was locked away, covered over by fear and insecurity. Then slowly but surely, I began to find it again. I'm still finding it, really. When we left Sonoma with Fauna asleep in the car, I couldn't stop staring at her face. I thought about the blood flowing through her wondered how traces of my DNA will surface in her, and traces of her father's, his quiet presence barely masking sadness and longing for a birthplace lost in the passage of time. And then I thought about Fauna as a tiny collection of cells traveling back from Ethiopia deep in my belly, clinging on for dear life. I remember standing at dawn after a nearly sleepless night during her first winter and seeing a hummingbird nest outside our bathroom window, blowing about in the wind and rain. I hope the home we're creating is even close to that strong 